Good morning. Uh, unlike prior episodes, I'm not going to start off with the name of this video episode. You probably already know that, but I am going to start off with one sentence that summarizes the point of this episode. And that is this. We don't fill our museum with objects. We fill it with stories. I've often been asked how I curate this museum, why I choose certain bikes or certain pieces of artwork over others to occupy a place in the museum. After all, I don't have any experience as the curator of a museum, and I barely have any experience with motorcycles. But somehow the museum has managed to come together in a way that appeals to a wide variety of guests from moto experts to people who barely know how a motorcycle works, like me. When I first started collecting, I relied heavily on the fact that a certain bike would fill a niche that needed to be filled in our lineup. But after a while, I realized that this approach would not result in a museum like no other. So what did I do instead? I figured that if I was going to carve my own niche in this industry, I needed to rely on something I knew a little something about. And that was my 10-year career as a photographer with National Geographic. When I was working with Nat Geo, we were constantly reminded to bring back images that tell a story. We were told, bring back images unlike anything we've ever seen before. I was told that if we were going to create a magazine like no other, a book like no other, an exhibit like no other, we needed something more than beautiful images. We needed to have images that told a story, images that forced our readers to dig deep and to wonder what was the story behind each image. And that's what I attempted to do when I was leaning out of open helicopters. I tried to capture images never seen before and ones that begged to have their story told. And that's exactly why I wanted to capture this trio of racers known as the Peril Speed A Keep. I was hell-bent for leather that I would win the auction for this magnificent group of bikes. All three in this A Keep, or racing team, were built by a British carpenter and cabinet maker by the name of Bill Bragg and each one has its own fascinating story. The first of the trio is the Yellow Peril, built by Bragg in 1960. It definitely has the most dramatic appearance, with a pointy nose reminiscent of Big Bird from Sesame Street. Notice how the exhaust pipes are positioned forward of the rider and then bent back. The story behind that is fairly remarkable. There wasn't enough room inside the fairing for all four pipes, so Bragg chose to exit the pipes through the front. But Bragg didn't have a tube bender that could handle large diameter tubes, so he heated the tubes and then bent them back in the grill of the gutter drain outside his house in England. How do you like them apples? The Yellow Peril raced as both a solo and with a sidecar. And in 1965, Yellow Peril set a sidecar world record of 147 miles per hour. Unbelievable, huh? Next up was the Scarlet Peril, which was outfitted with swing arm rear suspension to handle the bumpier roads of that era. Bragg started this build in 1961, and it was certainly a handsome beast with its bullnose red fairing. The builder upgraded this racer not only with that swing arm rear suspension, but also with Amal carbs. But the Scarlet Peril proved to be somewhat of a disappointment. It was unable to surpass the speed of its older sibling, the Yellow Peril. And so Bragg set about to build the third member of the trio, the Blue Peril. Bragg decided to combine the best of both worlds in the Blue Peril. With a frame layout similar to the Yellow, and rear suspension similar to the Scarlet. But this time Bragg added a supercharger to the Blue, and it is credited as the first person to supercharge Triumph twin engines. The Blue did not disappoint as it covered the quarter mile in a very respectable time of just over 11 seconds. The Yellow Peril and the Blue Peril 
were raced right up until the end of 1966. And that is where the story gets even more interesting. In 1966, Bragg emigrated to Australia. And from that point forward, for a third of a century, the trio disappears from sight. None of the three is exhibited or raced anywhere. In fact, it's not Bragg who is responsible for their resurrection from the dead, but rather an old rival of his by the name of Ron May. May dies in 1999, 33 years after the disappearance of the perils. And when his estate is inspected, the trio are discovered in a collapsed shed on his property, apparently having been stored there ever since Bragg's departure for Australia in 1966. The mystery ends there, but not the saga. After the recovery, the perils were restored and occasionally raced. And in 2011, after more than 45 years apart, the perils were installed at the London Motorcycle Museum. End of story, right? Wrong. In October of 2019, the London Museum goes belly up and the perils are auctioned off to a winning bid by the Hosmoto Museum, preserving not just racers of great historic importance, but also a story of immense value. Like I said in the beginning of this episode, we don't fill our museum with objects. We fill it with stories. And this is a great story.